Hi, my name is Bob Grinio, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project, and I am here with Slobodan Stankovic in lovely Switzerland, and he is going to walk us through his lab space here and uh, introduce you to the equipment that we've got for monitoring and also the electrolyzer, the HHO generator itself. So, fire away, Slobodan. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are, what are we what are we looking at over here? What what have we got in terms of um, getting the the gas nozzle and getting it started? Let's start with that. Okay, so uh, we have here some configuration for the uh, to do the uh, uh, the experiments uh, with replication uh, 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 standard. Uh, I mean, we can replicate all along uh, the same experiment uh, multiple times and to see difference in different uh, um, experiments. So we have here. Um, the income output, sorry, for the um, for the gas with the nozzle. Uh, we have here the starting ignition uh, of the plasma uh, with the electro the, with the high voltage transformer here. It's uh, like a, a 50, uh, 15 kilovolts uh, transformer, and uh, we start the plasma here. Uh, and after that, uh, we have uh, a system to. Uh, uh, Put the uh, the samples uh, automatically controlled by a computer, so we can do step uh, uh, stepping uh, with different steps uh, to put the uh, the sample inside the, the plasma. So you got like a, a worm drive here with a stepper motor. Exactly. You can control this with the computer, exactly. and then this slides this. And this is sliding uh, um, uh, rail in and out. Yeah, yeah we okay. can configure this. Uh, what uh, the mm -hmm. step. Uh, uh, will be uh, so um, after we put the sample in the plasma, so we can. Oh, should we see the plasma? Oh, can you show uh, the plasma? Yeah, we'll try to see if we have to <laughs> firstly start the electrolyzer. No, 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 no. Let, let's just see the, oh, the, the, the ignition. The ignition. The ignition. Okay. Yeah, the let, the let's ignition. see. Okay, this so, is the ignition. Okay, that's quite funky. So that's that's very much like uh, the arc that that uh, Irving Langmuir had in his arc hydrogen torch. Exactly. Wow. Okay. So that that's for starting igniting your plasma. So you don't have yeah. to mess around with gas flames and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. To very start cool. To, to, start, to start ignite with the, you know. Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. I, I like I like this. Uh, this. This is more. Method, yeah. Uh, yeah. So even uh, we can s or uh, just start the, the plasma or let the, the electric arc continue with the mm -hmm. plasma, so we can say. Mm -hmm. uh, do the uh, different experiments. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, because they because the, the arc will be producing evos. I guess it's pulsed, is it? Exactly. Right. Cool. So uh, in order to do the measurement, uh, we have different um, measurement devices. Here we have uh, two uh, uh, input uh, fiber optics, uh, which lead us uh, to the uh, ocean optics um, uh, devices um, spectrometers. This is Ocean Optics 2000, which is in visible range. Uh, like uh, 170 to 890 nanometers, mm -hmm. and the other one is the um, uh, NearQuest uh, Ocean Optics NearQuest uh, infrared uh, spectrometer, which is uh, his uh, ranges from 900 to uh, 400 nanometers. So we have a broad range from 170 hundred. Uh, to 400 nanometers. I wow, think it's okay, range. so so from in the UV all the way up into the yeah, far infrared, infrared, yeah? Cool. And after that we have here uh, a Giga counter mm -hmm. for eventual measurement of the uh, radiation mm -hmm. from the, uh, the sample, which is uh, this one. Uh, um, it's too bad I cannot uh, record the uh, the measurement directly to a computer, so we can, uh, you know. But we we talked about maybe putting yeah. the, the Russian device Russian. Uh, somewhere yeah. here, yeah. Uh, exactly. the pancake detector, which we can, so we can yeah. try and sync those things up with the recording. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Yeah. So so that's it. Uh, so then you have got this whole mechanism here uh, that also allows you to adjust the position of the exactly. source and stuff. So that's the, one of the things I wanted to do is that, <clears throat> that uh, the experiment could be really replicated easily. Uh, or adapted for different samples, so we can, you know, uh, uh, have a lot of experiments running uh, with different materials, with different, uh, you know, uh, procedures. So we can uh, really easily see, uh, you know, the difference in the uh, measurement or the uh, experiment. So cool. 
Sure. And uh, this is you've you've built this out of uh, box uh, aluminium section uh, extrusions. It's yeah, uh, <laughs> this is all uh, you know uh, from scratch. I call mm -hmm. all these equipment uh, I found you know uh, like eBay or uh, here on the websites, different websites mm -hmm. uh, where you can buy cheap uh, material and so on. So uh, a lot of these uh, were. Um, uh, electronic devices that are uh, found or uh, restored from you know <laughs> from not used or just put in the in the trash <laughs> best way to be so yeah. this over here i see you've got a co2 canister here what's this for uh this is one of the experiment i wanted to do is the um i wanted to control the input of co2 directly to the plasma to see if there is any you know um, difference in spectral you know measurement? This, this is interesting because actually um, Amasa uh, used anything with carbon in. Yeah. Effectively lowers the temperature. Uh, exactly. It, it would appear, but it actually raised the temperature in terms of the uh, uh, the thermal uh, temperature. So. Mm -hmm. And what we found was we, we were able to burn a hole straight the way through titanium. We were able to do whatever was going on mm -hmm. with tungsten and so forth uh, when the gas was on its own. Yeah. But when we added some carbon containing uh, gas, uh, be that a hydrocarbon, or mm -hmm. he even has uh, claims to be able to burn CO2, yeah. um, then... Uh, it actually raised the thermal temperature, but it was unable to go through the titanium sheet or do what it did before yeah, yeah. with the tungsten. So it's actually something is going on. And uh, I've argued that potentially this could be because there's an electronic temperature, like uh, like a, a coherent temperature um, that's in the killer electron volts. It's not a thermal temperature. Exactly. Uh, and that is disrupting the matter mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. it's co it forms a coherent thing and then that eats through. Yeah. Whereas when you add carbon, in there it's actually it's interacting with the carbon and uh, more than it is the actual material it's contacting yeah and it, uh, of course and uh, you said it's uh, changed the com configuration of the plasma yes so the plasma it's not the same anymore but what will, I was interested in to see what's going on with the carbon inside mm -hmm. the uh, co2 mm -hmm. when it puts in the plasma to see if there is you know some uh, change uh, I mean, uh, when you do the uh, spectral analysis directly mm -hmm. to see if there is some, you know, so that that, that would be out. very interesting. And, yeah. I, and I see you've got the the hose coming yeah, in here, and you've got a little here. jet to yeah, position. I wanted to it's kind of like add like it in here yeah, directly yeah, yeah, to the plasma. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that also I can control change like, the flow uh, rates and yeah, things like flow that. Yeah. So it's not, but. Uh, uh, like uh, you know, uh, steps uh, of the putting the ah. Oh, so you've got like with it and without, without it, with it yeah, and without yeah, it. Very exactly. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so different that's... and different positions in the jet because the jet actually has has been observed to have different compositions in its shape. Uh, yeah. It? Um, everyone who's talking about the plasma, oxyhydrogen plasma, or any other plasma, they're talking about uh, um, a, a needle. In the plasma, mm -hmm. so the, the when you see um, uh, a plasma coming or flame from the uh, I don't know any composition from different uh, gases like uh, oxyacetylene, uh, you will see a needle form uh, just at the output of the nozzle, and uh, they will say, uh, well, if you have if you want to see a, a, a most complete. Uh, flame in most uh, uh, thermally uh, high temperature, it's not on the output of the nozzle. It's like a few centimeters uh, uh, away from the nozzle. Uh, I'm tried a little, a few experiments with the, you know, a distance with the, uh, with the plasma and what is for sure that when you put uh, material directly to the point of that needle, uh, it's that uh, there there was a, a more you know um, interesting thing happened, right? Because uh, uh, intuitively you're taught like when you do chemistry at, at school that they, they give you a Bunsen burner and they say the hottest point is that that point in the flame, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. So so you're you're saying that the logic. It, is somewhat similar, it, but it's not the hottest point in this case. It's where the most weird stuff happens. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, I measured that, and I, I made a, an article on the research gate where I was measuring the temperature of the electron density uh, and temperature of the flame at just at the output of the nozzle, and that uh, we we're talking about you know between 120 and 140. Um, 
degrees uh, centigrade. So uh, very low temperature, but it's at that point when we see, uh, you know, uh, the, the transmutations going on on the different uh, materials, like, uh, for example, carbon. And uh, so we will try to, uh, you know, go th the most closest to the to the output of the uh, of the um, of the nozzle. Just mm -hmm. uh, just a few millimeters mm -hmm. here. I noticed that when I was watching a Mars gas as well. Uh, really, um, often they would start with bringing the flame in, and then they would sometimes have it extremely close to the output of the nozzle. Yeah, and yeah. Um, uh, and it, it, where where was it that you were looking when you discovered that um, most of the signal that you were seeing in your spectrometer was the emission from OH? Just be aware. Well, uh, if you look at the <clears throat> the picture on in the presentation, uh, ICCF twenty two, I have like uh, um, graphite is like a few centimeters, uh, sorry, few millimeters uh, from the from the nozzle, and um, I mean. This, this this is where it's the most significant you know uh, uh, output uh, of the uh, uh, of the spectra uh, carbon spectra or um, uh, um, sodium or potassium spectral uh, mm -hmm. lines appears mm -hmm. so uh, if I put it a little bit down you can all see that the everything uh, all the spectra is uh, in form of intensities uh, going down. Mm -hmm. So if you put it really, really near the, the output, uh, of course not to, to block it. <laughs> yeah, output, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, if you're a few millimeters, then that's where you see the, you, the most. Uh, and th this, uh, you know, when I'm thinking about that just intuitively, I'm, I'm thinking, well, this could be this kind of electron bunching effect going on or, or material bunching effect. Yeah. It, it has, you know, when you, when you, um, you push a a jet of fluid, whether that's water mm -hmm. or gas, onto a solid surface. You end up with a, a vortex and 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 uh, tearing forces mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, around the point of the impact, and that actually can form, you know, eddies and and uh, uh, toroidal structures to form. Yeah. And I, I've seen some papers on that in the past. So maybe it's it's not only that the gas has a different constituents there mm -hmm. um uh, and because it's less burnt or whatever it mm -hmm. might be that the it's forcing it to uh, self organize uh, mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. and it, it's 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 almost the self organization that that is leading to the the observed properties as much as the constituents in the gas we can we can yeah so it, yeah yeah, yeah it's, it, and it'd be interesting because um uh, we're going to have a high resolution uh, um 120 frames per second camera looking at this yeah. but it's also going to be looking at it um uh, with a five times macro lens so mm -hmm. we should just be able to see that head oh yeah um and you know maybe we could be able to determine some of these uh formation so it's got yeah. quite exciting so uh, be yeah to see. And, 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 and so um is this this what we have uh to discuss on this and, and we can yeah. go and have a look at the electrolyzer because yeah, i'm sure yes. everyone wants to look yeah. at your electrolyzer. electrolyzer okay so, so let's have a look at that the, the electrolyzer here it's a standard electrolyzer alkaline um electrolyzer we so have what, what have you got in the front panel there take so, us through the front panel okay the front panel is a simple front panel we have power on on off water pump very important water pump for the electrolyzers a lot of people don't put the pump uh, in their circuit because uh, they um, they think they're, they're not needed but uh, <laughs> um, it's very important for the when you do the electrolysis uh, electrolysis of the water you have a lot of bubbles mm -hmm. creating inside and in order to um, you have to get rid of these bubbles because uh, they're infecting, uh, affecting the uh, efficiency of the electrolyzer. And, and also, Murray B. King said that, like, if you have water going through, you're going to get some cavitation, and you're also going to prevent the buildup of large bubbles, which yeah. may may mean you get something like an adiabatic compression of the bubbles. And so, yeah. this is what I've been discussing with the Mars gas that the yeah. vibration could lead to. Uh, the dissolving of oxygen, the paramagnetic oxygen that's synthesized, which could then lead to the production of more of the heavy type yeah. of gas that that you want. So having the and it also stops a uh, build up of sludge on the actual electrolyzer plates, so like containers. Well, the sludge, um, I don't think it's uh, it's affecting a lot of uh, you know creating a, or removing the sludge. 
but uh, what is affecting is really, and that was shown in different uh, studies, uh, the um, conductivity of the water. If you, okay. have, if you have a lot of bubbles, mm -hmm. well, yeah. bubbles that doesn't, doesn't conduct electricity. So if you have a lot of, uh, you know, production of the uh, uh, of the gas inside between the, the plates, you have to evacuate them because the um, uh, the conductivity of the water will drop down. So uh, you have voltage going up or you have a lot of uh, heat production in, instead of doing the electrolysis. So that's why you need to uh, to put, uh, you know, a uh, system, circulating system. Uh, so it, it's water. about keeping the efficiency of the electrolysis process yeah, yeah, going exactly, as well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and after that we have um, a PVM, uh, standard PVM mm -hmm. uh, module on the back side. This one is uh, uh, 0 to 50 amps and uh, 0 to 100 volts uh, used for this one. Uh, we have a flow meter uh, made uh, also by uh, Arduinos and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, I didn't use this one, I have to, because I ordered um, a module that is um, uh, to switch uh, the output of the gas uh, from use to not use, to dump. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is that the module needs uh, compressed air to, to work. So right. at the end, uh, I put uh, a manual, you know, switch to uh, when you want to use or when you want to dump it out. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Um, okay, so fire it up. Why not? Oh, yeah. Well, we can start the, the Okay, pump. so you can see the pump working yeah. there. Normally, it's... Uh, I didn't uh, fill it up uh, a lot because uh, there, when it starts production, the gas production, it's it's going really up with the bubbles. So mm -hmm. um, not to get all the you know liquid go to the bubbler and filling the bubbler and so. So your electrolyzer there. What what are your plates made of in that? Uh, it's standard plates, mm -hmm. uh, stainless steel, mm -hmm. uh, medical stainless steel, one point forty five forty one or three three sixteen L. Mm -hmm which is, uh, I mean, normally it's th that's used for, for the electrolyzer. And you've had some custom parts, uh, laser well, cut this up is, there. This is, I will, do, I will say, patent pending. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> uh, these um, plates are um, made on CNC mm -hmm. uh, for, with my, uh, my uh, construction, my, uh, uh, I will say, uh, uh, well, testing them. This one is, uh, I would say, it's a prototype. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're testing different. Uh, the uh, thing is, uh, I can change inside the, the, the plates uh, with different materials or with different mm -hmm. configurations and so. So this one is just a prototype. But it's uh, for what I'm doing here, it's working great. And the transformers at the back there, they uh, are? This is the transformer from one of the uh, welding machine. Uh, I took off, uh, it was uh, used uh, with a manual, uh, they have here like uh, a separation mm -hmm. uh, plate mm -hmm. uh, when you can uh, regulate to have uh, more or less uh, amps uh, going through the installation. Mm -hmm. uh, but I took it off and I put the PVM inside, mm -hmm. so uh, with a condenser and a big, <laughs> this one I found, it's a um, DC, uh, AC to DC converter mm -hmm. that uh, 300 amps, <laughs> mm -hmm. 1,000 volts. I think it's not not gonna gonna heat up. No. <laughs> so um, this is your smaller device. Uh, it's less yeah. efficient than your bigger device. Uh, is yeah. that right? Uh, I mean, it products uh, the production is less. It's like 400, uh, 400 uh, liters per hour. Mm -hmm. uh, efficiency is like uh, something between 35 and 40 percent mm -hmm. efficiency. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the previous one, uh, which uh, is used in different articles I made, uh, I made it with my father, and this one is a little bit bigger. He produced uh, like uh, 1,200 liters per hour, and uh, it's some um, uh, very, I mean, it's a good uh, efficiency, like 70 percent of efficiency. But um, I couldn't get it here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a little bit complicated. Yeah. So. So great. So I, I think that's a good introduction to yeah. the equipment and uh, uh, the options that you have here for um, spectral analysis yeah. and uh, for registration of different samples. And uh, we'll chuck some other detectors on there and yeah. also 
Uh, we've got a wire up the AM radio to see, hit, hit, see if we hear anything uh, when it's oh, going yeah, on yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so there we have it. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank welcome. you very much for your time, Slobodan, for taking us through this. And uh, we're going out to get some components now to yeah. build up our uh, uh, pellet press, right? Pellet press, yeah. Famous. <laughs> <laughs> so see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.